What is coming is a major collapse in the value of the dollar. The inflation is ultimately going to result in the cost of living rising much faster than the paper value of people's assets. So believe me, the rich are going to get theirs too. Everybody in America is going to be impoverished to a degree by these failed policies. And welcome back. That was stockbroker Peter Schiff back in September warning about the devaluation of the dollar potentially happening due to rising inflation. What are the long-term impacts for a government that doesn't allow its citizens to work and simply prints off money that doesn't exist? Here to comment is the president of the Euro Pacific Capital and host of the Peter Schiff Show himself. Peter Schiff, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Now, you warned back in September about the potential for devaluation. Uh, what do you see happening right now as we continue to spend trillions of dollars in response to COVID relief? Well, remember, every dollar the government spends has to be paid for. And the most expensive way to pay for government spending is through inflation, the printing of money, which unfortunately is how all the new government spending is being paid for now, because we don't get any government for free. Whenever the government spends money, it is taking uh, resources out of the private sector, because the government doesn't actually create any resources on its own. It has to first take them from the private sector before it can reintroduce them back into the private sector. So it's, it, it, it's not really creating anything. It's redistributing. And when they do it through taxation, they take your money from you. But when they do it through printing money, they take your purchasing power. And that's exactly what they're doing. This is a massive inflation tax. And the American public, particularly the middle class and the working poor, are going to be hit exceptionally hard. Uh, by the cost of all these deficits and all this stimulus. Well, talk to us a little bit about this, because obviously America is not the only country that is printing money right now. We talked about it yesterday. We have a global sovereign debt of approaching close to $277 trillion by the end of this year, debt to GDP ratio uh, in excess of 360%. Uh, so where does America fall in this you know, world spin uh, of spending that's happening around the globe? And what are the dominoes that could potentially be unleashed here um, that could be possibly similar to what we saw in 2008, but for different reasons. Yeah, well, first of all, you're right. This is a global problem. America politicians aren't the only ones that are guilty uh, of these offenses. It's just that we're doing it on a larger scale and we're doing it from a more vulnerable position because the United States is the issuer of the world's reserve currency and we depend on the overvalued dollar for our standard of living. We have huge trade deficits, which, by the way, are now at record levels, along with record budget deficits. But the only reason that we can finance these huge trade deficits is because the world has been willing to hold on to our currency because it is the reserve. But if we jeopardize that status, which I think we're going to do, if the world balks at holding the trillions and trillions of dollars uh, that are being printed and all these treasuries uh, to make all this deficit spending possible, then the dollar has a lot further to fall in terms of real purchasing power than other currencies. And we're going to see a much uh, bigger increase in the standard of living here in the United States because Americans have benefited far more uh, from the current monetary system than any other country. And if this system comes to an end, which hopefully it will uh, for the sake of the world and so we can go back on a sounder monetary system, uh, but the country that ultimately will suffer the most in the short run is the United States. Now, quickly, we got about 60 seconds here. You know, there are some people who will push back and say, well, look, you know, is it possible that a weaker dollar could benefit America? You have so much sovereign debt tied up in American assets and tied up in the American dollar uh, that basically if China wanted to come over here and say, hey, we're calling the debt, you could go tell them, hey, go paint the, you know, wallpaper the walls with it. Uh, so is there some notion that America's fortunes are so entwined uh, with the well-being of some of these other foreign entities, be they friendly or not friendly, uh, that on some basic level we'd be able to weather this storm and it's not worth trying to go down this process with us? No, I mean... Certainly, the world has thrown a lot of good money after bad when it comes to propping up the dollar. But when the dollar declines, it's going to take the U.S. economy down with it and the standard of living of every American, because what we earn are dollars, what we save are dollars. And as the dollar loses value, 
Americans collectively get a lot poorer. The rest of the world is going to benefit from the demise of the dollar because Americans have only been able to live beyond their means because the rest of the world has been willing to live beneath its means to make it possible. But as the world moves away from the dollar, foreign workers are going to finally start to consume all the goods that they produce instead of allowing Americans to consume them. And foreigners are going to invest their savings productively in their own economies rather than loaning them to the U.S. government. So Americans are going to wake up in a very different reality, one where we have to start saving and producing and making a lot of stuff, but not going out and spending and borrowing money. And the U.S. government is going to have to dramatically cut back on its government spending and level with a lot of uh, the American public that they're not going to get all the benefits that they've been promised. Because if we try to make good on these commitments and we do it with a printing press, then the risk is hyperinflation and we completely destroy any value the dollar has. And that is the worst possible economic outcome. Well, it sounds like a perfect storm of doom when the nation that has stopped producing has to all of a sudden start producing to deal yeah. with the reality that we could never afford the stuff we were buying in the first place. But Peter Schiff, thank you so much for joining us. Hope to have you back on soon, my friend. Absolutely.